。哎，我怎么又看不到你了？我也看不到你了。我能看到我自己。我也能看到我自己。哦，我能看到你了。好了。OK。Sir, sorry, we spoke Chinese because we both have internet problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, let we start it. Ah,、uh, Patrick, you first. Okay, so I would just say my first point. Okay. Okay, my first point is,、uh, a peacement policy cannot、uh, preserve peace in other country because when you do the A、uh, peacement policy. The other country will be invaded, and you just let them to be invaded. So a peacement policy actually、uh, made wars. Yeah. Okay. So,、um, my opinion, my counter argument is that the Second World War is inevitable because the Determination of Hitler to invade another country could not be extinguished, and the policy of appeasement successfully delayed the war for a few years because the foreign expansion plan of Hitler started from 1935, and in 1936, Hitler invade、uh, Hitler launched his army to Rhineland. And that can be seen as a sign to invade France to and invade other countries. So, in my opinion, the a peace, the Second World War is inevitable, and the appeasement brought Britain and France more time to reorganize their army and to militarize to prepare for war. And also, the uh Britain and France starved off. Uh, German aggression by appeasement, and this action brought Britain and France more time to organize their arm to def to organize their army to defend. Yeah, that's my first point. Okay, so I I'm going to uh de debate with you with this point, or just turn to my next point. Maybe we. Need to have a short debate section. Yeah. So I think that、um, although Hitler's aggression is inevitable, but、uh, the appeasement actually brought the aggression、um, earlier. Like when they intervened the Hitler in the militarization of the Rhineland, actually Hitler would not、uh, dare to. To invade other country because he was seeing that Britain and France is more powerful. So when at the first when they if they don't use the appeasement, then Hitler will not have the courage to do anything. So then hit,、uh, Britain and France can control Hitler, and maybe then when Hitler will stop to doing to to make further move. So then they can actually have more time to control with Hitler, and maybe then the Germany will collapse in、uh, this period. I have one question for you. How do you、yeah. know that German that that Germany wouldn't dare to invade other countries if there's no appeasement? If there's no appeasement, because in the remilitarization of Rhineland. Uh, Hitler doesn't.、Uh, he still afraid of French intervention, and also in the Anschluss of、uh, Austria,、uh, Hitler still considering the consequence of Britain and France. What if they intervene with the Anschluss? And also in the Czechoslovakia. In fact, Hitler doesn't.、Uh, he wasn't very confident of himself of his power before the. Before Czechoslovakia and Austria. However, yeah, I I agree with your opinion, but there have several drawbacks in your opinions. First of all, during 1938 and 19 1937 and 1938, the military forces in Germany is 
much powerful. It's already powerful than Britain and France. And I think and I believe Hitler is confident enough. The policy of appeasement gave for me, it's kind of like a buffer to uh, stop the stop the speed of Hitler's in uh, invading other countries. Yeah, but before the the non uh, non aggressive pact between USSR and Germany, in fact, Germany was encountering with enemies from uh, all directions. Like in the West, there are France and Britain, and in the East, there are Russia. So Hitler did not dare to uh, be hostile to France and Britain because he also afraid of the Eastern line. So in uh, so if they don't have any, uh, if Britain and France didn't have the appeasement policy, Hitler would not to be make alliance with the West Eastern Front with USSR then because Stalin won't able to have the non aggressive pact with Hitler, then the both sides will be the, the both sides on Germany will be hostile to Germany. So Hitler will be stuck in the middle. <laughs> so I think the Eastman policy actually doesn't made Hitler to act slowly, slower. Oh, I still hold my opinion that if if there's no uh, if there was no appeasement policy, maybe Hitler started to invade Czechoslovakia, Poland in the year of 1936. Yeah, if there's no appeasement policy, right? But when there's no appeasement policy, then when Hitler invaded the first country, like he, when he invaded Czechoslovakia, the Britain and France will already uh, mobilize their army. So uh, Hitler won't get enough chance to to invade Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. yeah you, you said if uh, Hitler invade the first countries like the uh, Czechoslovakia, the Sudeten land, the Britain and France need to mobilize their army. But however, during the time Britain and France were both weak, they don't have they don't have money and they suffered a lot from the post uh, World War One. So the peoples and the prime minister in Britain are all afraid to have another war. So they don't have enough forces to mobilize their army and to mobilize their weapons to fight against Germany. So that may be the one of the reasons why that they use appeasement to fight against, uh, to use the appeasement to treat Germany. Yes, however, they still have many allies like Britain and France are allies and also if they don't have the appeasement policy, then Stalin will also join the Britain and France because they both afraid of Germany. And also in the south, there are Mussolini. If Britain do not sign the uh, the Anglo-German naval agreement, then uh, the Stressa Front will not be collapsed. And if Stressa Front do not collapse, then the Britain, France, and uh, and Italy. Italy will be on the same line so they can they have enough force to against Germany. I don't think they have enough force because uh, let we understand Britain and France situation during that time because yeah. Britain was not ready for war and the rearmament only started slowly in 1936 and it started slowly and British forces were not matched for the Germans. German forces and he could not face German forces and Chamberlain was not a dictator with right to start a war and also he could not go with a war without the support of his citizens without the support of British people and also 
the most of people in Britain and France, they don't want a, a war, they wanted a peace and almost at any price. So it's hard to uh, declare the war to Germany. And also you said that they can find the they can find a strong ally. Britain and France can find the strong ally. Uh, you said about USSR. He can have an ally with USSR, but however, during the time, Britain and France, they dislike USSR because they were afraid of the spread of commu communism and they don't want to be the ally with Soviet Union. And also, uh, for example, like USA, USA was following a policy of isolation and there was an inclined to stay out of the European affairs. And you also mentioned about Italy. However, after 1935, Italy under Mussolini had gradually moved away from Britain and France and get closer to Germany. This led to Italy dropping its opposition to Germany and demands over the Austria. So you see there are no ally with Britain and France and they're not strong enough to declare war to, towards Germany. And one more thing, the League of Nations. The League of Nations is established after World War I to help the prevent of the further conflict. But it's proved that League of Nations is ineffective over both Manchuria and Albania. It has Manchuria crisis and Albania crisis, and the member states could not reach agreements on enforce their decisions. So after all the statements, we can see that Britain and France, they don't have strong allies, so they cannot declare the war towards Germany. Yeah, I finished. OK, but they don't need to have to declare a war because Germany was not ready, but not, was not prepared for a real war. They would might just uh, afraid of Britain and France because of their because of their greatness and their economy and all sorts of all sort of things. Because uh, you know the plan to invade France and Britain was uh, planned in 1937. Uh, so it was after the appeasement policy. If they, the Britain and France start the appeasement policy earlier, uh, stop the appeasement policy earlier, then they can hold Hitler because Hitler won't have a plan to, to against these two countries because Britain and France was weak, but Germany doesn't know it. So Brit Germany will just think that Britain and France is still strong and it, uh, and Germany is still very weak and he will not dare to take any actions. And also about Italy, Italy start to le left uh, Britain and France since the, after the stress of France because of the Anglo-German naval agreement. And this is also a part of the appeasement policy because if there's no appeasement policy, then Italy will not leave Britain and France. It's still, still seeing that Britain and France is still can be trusted. Then uh, Germany will be isolated and Germany will not have any allies because uh, every nation around Germany is hostile to him. <laughs> Yeah, but I think uh, the Anglo-German naval pact is now the only reason that Italy left the ally with Britain and France. There are still a lot of many different aspects reasons because Britain and France, uh, so, sorry, Italy and Germany, they, they hold the same ideology and they also have the desire to expansion to other countries. and. The, the ambitions of Mussolini is in Mediterranean and the, however the ambitions of Hitler is uh, East, is that East? Yeah, is East European. So 
East European countries, they don't have the conflict between their profits. So this is one of the, this can be also seen as one of reason that it, Italy left Britain and France. So I, I don't think appeasement is our only reason. And also uh, you mentioned that uh, Germany was not ready to start a war. But however, I think Hitler was already to start a war during the 1936 or 1937. Hitler yeah, but, had that forces yeah. to start a war. Yeah, but what when Hitler uh, started to prepare the war, uh, the remilitarization of the Germany of German. Back then, because of the peace policy, when Hitler started the conscription, uh, France did not intervene. So Hitler can continue with his conscription. But before the mil remilitarization and the conscription, the Germany was still very weak. You said France didn't respond because France was unable to respond. During that time, the France, the situation in France, um, France was politically, politically unstable during that time because the violent cl clashes in the streets between the supporters of the right and the left wing parties, and France also appeared oh. unlikely to assist any attempt to, to act against Germany because France wasn't able to act and so yeah uh, how about britain although britain is uh, dealing with the abyssinia crisis he still has he can still uh, like condemn Hitler or to impose sanction on germany but uh, he did nothing i don't think I don't think British only face Albania crisis. It's uh, don't forget about Japan yeah, and yeah. India and Italy and Germany. There's a lot of other issues that the British need to consider. So he could not. I I think she could not focus on Germany during that time. Yeah, there are other conflicts, the conflicts from Asia, like Japan. Patrick, think, Patrick will discuss about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think we're too long. The time limit is 10 minutes, right? Yes, 10 minutes. So what can we do? And we have the, only have the first point. You only started your first point. <laughs> yeah, I do. Only started your first point. Yeah, maybe we need to finish it. But I'm still considering the first point. Like you said, uh, Britain and France was weak. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. You can say your second point or we continue with this argument. I think it's actually enough. Yeah. It's enough because we already discussed about 22 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And we'll so make we yeah, Vivek might be annoyed when, I, when he saw, when he sees that we discussed 22 minutes. Yeah, or maybe we discuss again for two minutes with time limit. Oh, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's good. Patrick, okay. I still have other things to do. I, I have MUN conference today. Okay. Bye, Patrick, and I uh, really appreciate this discussion. Yeah, you give me a lot of clue, a lot of points. Yeah, 
And by the way, you see that positive point is very easy. What? You see that positive perspective is easy. It's yeah. Not too hard. Yeah. At at first, I saw it, it was very difficult because I totally agree with the appeasement is a failure. <laughs> but however, when I did some kind of research and read some articles, it's it's always have some positive aspects. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Bye. Bye. So Bye. we present to the to Vivek, to Mr. Vivek. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I will save this video on streams, and I will send the link to him. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, Patrick. Bye.